Okay, let's take the P for this solution. Let's take the P of this number, I should say. What was our answer? Uh, between 8 and 9. All right, I think that's showing some good progress. That's the right answer. All right, that's perfect notation. So you saw that the first thing we have to do is put this into standard scientific notation. We've talked about how we can't have a number that's a coefficient that's bigger than 10 over here. We need a coefficient that's between 1 and 10. So you put this into the regular scientific notation. Um, and you did that correctly, I think a lot of people would mistakenly think that the exponent was 10 to the negative 13 here. But it's good that you saw that when we put this to scientific notation, uh, this ends up as 10 to the negative 9. You're making this into a smaller number, so this should become a bigger number. Okay, good. Uh, and then you put in the references, and again, something else that we're doing well now is you're focusing on the numbers first and only later taking the P. So that's a good habit, focusing on the numbers first and only later taking the P. And when you did take the P, you reversed the inequalities, so that was good. 10 to the negative 8 is the biggest number, so it has the smallest p. And then you got your answer here. And again, this is a very normal pH between 8 and 9 over here. We have a basic solution in this case. All right, now I think we made some good progress then on taking the p. Um, now remember, you don't, let that re uh, uh, you don't want to forget then how is this different from taking logarithms. So what, what steps would have been different here if we were taking logarithms? Well, there's two things that would be different if we were taking logarithms. First of all, the logarithm is just the exponent. It's not the negative exponent. So if I was taking the logarithm, I would just use negative 8, not positive 8. And the logarithm of this would just be 9. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty clear. But the other difference is that when you take the logarithm of the inequality, you don't flip the inequality. If we were taking the logarithms, we would leave the 10 to the negative 9 on the left, and we'd leave the 10 to the negative 8 on the right. Because the, sm the smallest number has the smallest logarithm, and the biggest number has the biggest logarithm. And we've seen one of the biggest challenges here is that um, people learn how to do logarithms, and then they learn how to take the p. And then by the time they've learned how to take the p, they forget how to take the logarithms. Yeah. And then when they go back and review how to take the logarithms, they forget how to take the p. So now we've tried to do both of those in one session. You have both of those in your notes, and you just have to keep constantly bouncing back and forth between both of those to make sure you don't get confused. When you're working with acids and bases, you usually take the p. You usually don't take the logarithm, because you're usually trying to find the pH. However, there are uh, some very important cases where you do have to take the logarithm. For example, in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you're going to have to take a logarithm, right. not a p, because the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation depends on the logarithm. So this is one of the main reasons why we had to go over all this material right now. 
Uh, in fact, you might have to take both p's and logarithms. You can see from this, you might have to take both p's and logarithms. So this is where you can really be tested on whether you clearly see the difference between taking the p of something and taking the logarithm, because you might have to do both in the same problem. Uh, so we definitely had to make sure we were very clear about both of those and uh, how to think about them before we can start using this henderson hausebach equation here. All right, so unfortunately, we still won't quite get to that in today's session, but I think we're all ready to do that in the next session. Uh, but uh, please make sure before the next session, make sure um, before the next session, carefully go through all the examples we did today, not just for log logarithms, but also carefully go back and review the explanation we gave at the beginning for how buffers work. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to be that, as, that to be as fresh in your mind as possible, so hopefully in our next session, hopefully we can do as little review as possible, and hopefully we can just go straight into how to solve problems using the henderson hausebach equation. So I think that would be a good topic for our next session, just how to solve problems using this henderson hausebach equation. And the way to make sure we can spend as much time on that as possible, again, is try to make sure you review what we uh, went over today. Uh, so we started by just explaining qualitatively how buffers work and why they consist of a weak acid and its conjugate and how the buffer soaks up any, act any extra. So the conjugate is, ha consists of both an acid and a base. So it can soak up any extra acid that you add or any ba extra, extra base that you add. Um, and then, uh, in preparation for using the henderson hasselbach equation, we went over the mathematics of how to approximate the p and the logarithm without a calculator. Uh, so uh, if you're able to review that before the next session, we'll just be able to do a bunch of problems on using the henderson hausbach equation to solve problems then uh, at that point. OK, okay good. Um, and like we saw, um, you might want to focus more on the notes from today than last time, because even though we had good notation last time, now we have even better notation for dealing with this. OK. Well, this is great. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, so the big thing is, um, make sure that when you're testing yourself, you keep going back and forth between logarithms and p's. Because mm -hmm. the thing that confuses people is they, they use the logarithm method for taking the p or the p method for taking the logarithm. So you have to keep bouncing back and forth so that you don't get confused about that. And the key thing is we actually, actually, it might have seemed like we did a bunch of examples, mm -hmm. but we really only did one or two examples of each issue. We only did one or two examples of each issue. So the only way you can really have mastery of this is to keep doing these examples over and over. You really got to keep doing these over and over uh, because th this would not be the main part of the problem. This would just be one technical aspect of a big problem. Um, so it's not good enough to be able to get these right. We have to be able to get these right quickly and with confidence and without even having to worry about it so we can get on to the main interesting issues in the problem. So again, uh, I really recommend try to redo the examples that we just did in the session over and over until you're not just getting them right, but you're getting them right easily and with confidence so that you don't even have to worry about these minor technical issues when you're working, about, when you're working on the main interesting things in the problem like the interpretation or, or the equations that you're going to use. Okay. some improvement from last time. I saw I, you were definitely remembering a lot from last time, but in math is unforgiving. It's not enough to remember a lot. You got to remember it perfectly because one little mistake messes everything up. And like I was just saying, it's not good enough to get these right. You have to be able to get them right quickly and with confidence because you might have to do a bunch of these operations in just one problem. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.